there's one thing all gamers can agree on. It's that we hate fucking battle passes. You dumb motherfucking bitch. But what if I told you we're actually benefiting from this new game direction, and in the future, we won't be paying for games at all. And to fully understand this, we need to go back to the creation of the Earth. In the beginning, God created the Odyssey and the Pond. On the first day, God created the Rage Quit. And ever since, gaming has revolved around collecting currencies. But I don't have any money. Why the fuck did you order a pizza? Euro dollars, mora, rupees, zenny, mooney. I'm a stripper. In-game currency is one of the oldest concepts of progression in video games. You get currency, you get better items. These items in turn help you get stronger, look cooler, and ultimately beat the game. But all of a sudden, games started coming with a second currency. This one wasn't so fun. This one cost you real money. What in the hell is this shit? They even look the same. You can't even tell the difference. I'm fucking done. I'm so done, bro. <laughs> Now, when you think of the word microtransaction, your mind probably goes to the V-Buck. But these in-apps and battle passes have been around much longer than the Battle Royale. An arcade game that came out well before I was born, called Double Dragon 3 The Rosetta Stone, was the first documented V-Buck. Here, your ability to get better in this game was determined by two ways. One, just like all arcade games, was to insert more quarters after losing to continue or try again. But in DD3, you could insert quarters at the weapon shop to give yourself weapons, additional fighters or lives, and new fighting moves. That's right, you just witnessed the birth of Pay to Win. <coughs> My god, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. This weapon shop was the first thing you'd see upon loading in before you started playing. Sound familiar? But sadly, this item shop didn't refresh at 7 p.m. Eastern, nor did it have the second most attractive woman you've ever seen in your entire life hitting the gritty, with the first most being Brett Cooper. The developers committed the cardinal sin of gaming. Whoever has the deepest pockets wins. Mix this with difficult gameplay and unfair mechanics, and now you have the logic of a current day mobile game. It's psychological warfare to brain game you into spending more money. In fact, there's a word that describes these tactics called loss aversion. <coughs> loss aversion is an emotional trigger that is telling you that losses are seen as more significant than gains of the same proportion. In other words, finding $100 on the street is cool. Losing $100 fucking sucks. Pay a little upfront to avoid the emotional damage of losing later. Oh, 300 black men for only two pounds. Yes! We now live in a society where microtransactions are expected with new releases. So the answer is just play different games, right? Wrong. You see, this pay to win model just works, and developers know this. They'll let you win based off of skill, but not without reminding you that you are still less powerful than your opponents. You'll walk away from those wins feeling like you improved your skill, but still feel that grind set to increase your win percentage. All in the name of monetization and long-term retention. Besides, all your friends are playing these games. They're fast-paced and exciting, colorfully overwhelming, and dopamine overloading. They're, dare I say, with exception, pretty good games. Even the most classic games have taken this new style. You hop on Call of Duty to experience nation-crippling warfare with explosions, death, and destruction. Wait a minute. Is that Nicki Minaj teabagging my throat? But the right answer to this entire phenomenon is simple. Wait, not that simple. Just enjoy those games. Enjoy those wins, those funny moments, those shadow play clips, because you probably got that game for free. Download for free. Download free. Listen up. We need ideas to make more money. A new first person shooter. Remaster one of our old games. Make all our games free? Sounds backwards, right? Surely no one's buying that many microtransactions. Yep, they are, those greedy motherfuckers. And don't call me Shirley. Free-to-play monetization did almost three times the revenue compared to all game sales in 2022. This means that <laughs> you can expect more and more developers to keep this trend. They can make more money doing it. So why not? The man credited with creating Candy Crush says this, the microtransaction is so strong 
and it's definitely a much better model. I think all companies have to transition over to that. But the good news? You don't have to spend a dime to play the newest, hottest single in your area. As Reddit user Lego Junior puts it, you can play Dota 2 for free because I pay for it. You are welcome. But ducks, free to play players will always be in a skill deficit for the reasons you just listed. Well, yes. Unfortunately, not all games are made equal, and those games just shouldn't be played if they've got unfair mechanics. The future of gaming depends on developers making games that are just simply fair, whether you pay or not. Jamie, pull up the uh, free to play, pay to win scale real quick. Mobile games are the biggest offenders by a long shot. The problem is that developers don't tell you that your free game doesn't give you the same experience the paid players get. It's up to you to feel failure and learn over time that money can change that failure. Age, I read about, did you say want want? Luckily, there are many other games where microtransactions are done properly, and this isn't the case. Take CS2 and Fortnite where microtransactions have zero effect on gameplay. The two three stands for how many hundreds of dollars you spent. Or Halo Infinite and in Deep Rock Galactic, where battle passes never have an expiration date, or they get added to regular items you can loot after that season expires. Give me a rock and stone. Let's revisit an old friend. Overwatch 2 said this, we will give you new heroes, but you gotta work to get them. They locked the heroes behind a battle pass and claimed you could just play and gain XP to unlock them. The community reacted lightly. <laughs> what the fuck? But they're far from the only game to do this. I've really been enjoying the finals, but go through their reviews and you'll see the same thing. Complaints about guns locked behind their leveling system. Now, this is a dick move from Blizzard because you had full access to every hero for the first six years of Overwatch 1. Then suddenly, they changed their minds. But for now, let's ignore all the other issues that came with the release of Overwatch 2 and just focus on this concept of experience-locked content for now. Here's the whole point. Don't you guys remember waking up on a Monday morning before school, looking outside, and there's snow on the ground? Here comes a full day of nothing but COD multiplayer for the next 16 hours. But almost every single gun was locked behind... The fuck? Yup. A leveling system. You get shit on by a guy running an ACR in Modern Warfare 2 and scream obscenities at him through your turtle beach. Bro, I'll tell you what, you fat little cunt. You'd run back to the lobby ready to do the same exact thing, only to see you were actually hours and hours of levels from being able to use it. But you never forgot that original beatdown. You'd finally get the gun, but then you realized you were shit at using it, so you went back to trickshotting on bots. Oh! Oh my God! Okay. Maybe you didn't do that much. Even in single player games, you have to put in the time and progress through the story to unlock the better gear and weapons. My point is this, having items locked behind experience is not a new concept that came from developer greed. Again, we can agree Overwatch 2 fucked up on this. They reneged their original concept and removed previously free access to all heroes. But 19%? We used to pay for this privilege. And in Call of Duty, we used to prestige and lock all the weapons <gasps> voluntarily 10 plus times. Yes! Shouldn't we be jumping for joy? Imagine telling people 10 years ago that you and all your friends can play the same game together cross-platform for free. The catch is that you can spend money on in-game cosmetics if you want, but it's totally optional and doesn't affect gameplay. Not only do the developers get a chance to make more than the $60 price tag we're used to seeing, but the players who don't want to spend the money can download and play for free. Game developers are just constantly trying new ways to grow their games and businesses. Many are receptive to the feedback they receive, and at the heart of it, they just want you to enjoy their game. Now, I'm not defending all games and all developers. Some outliers are well aware of the predatory mechanics they put in their games because the government's onto them now. The moral of the story is this, enjoy your games. And even though we can't control every developer's decisions, we can continue supporting those who are receptive to our feedback. Keep those games close and love them hard. Thanks for watching. Subscribe!